Hello and welcome to the channel YouTube world. As always, there will be a link down in the description box if you want to read the patch notes at your own leisure. We are now on version 1.34 on PS4 and 6.6 .6 everywhere else. I wish patch notes numbers were always the same across all consoles, but I get that that can't always be the case for obvious reasons. So, let's get into it right here. What's new? We've got new weekly missions, new elites, Akira Sakamoto, and Steve Fisher. Outpost is now available on Twisted Steel. Vehicles. Tanks improves the self-repair HUD indicator to always show if the player is able to repair the damage. Sorry, let me fix this here. Increase the direct damage of the Type 3 shells to improve their AT ability. This tank does not have AT rounds available, and this will make the Type 3 gun a good all-around choice, while the spec tree means that you can make other sacrifices to activate the upgraded driver gun. Tweaked the Hatchy shell to be more powerful. HE shell, similar to the Calliope, but not identical. It has better splash, but worse direct damage. The Hatchie's rocket barrage is designed as a better anti-vehicle tool, whilst the shell is designed to be good against infantry and single targets. Which means if you give this video a thumbs down, it'll be perfect for you. Fixed the Stug 4 default shell being too low damage versus tanks. The damage versus tanks here will rise a bit to match the Panzer IV's default shell. Fixed the AP round on the Staghound having higher drag if using the Little John adapter. Standardized the Staghound HE and Staghound Little John HE rounds on the same blast and damage pattern, since the player doesn't have a choice to keep the original gun as they upgrade. Increase the Crocodile gun's damage to armor substantially and increase the blast radius and velocity. The Croc's cost did not equate to its power, and this change should help to improve that. So the croc got some teeth sharpening at the dentist. Reduce the damage of the Sherman 76mm heat and Type 5 shells direct damage so they no longer two hit kill against front armor. These are still very potent tank killers but they were shown to be performing a bit outside of the intended curve. Flak Panzer will now stop firing when it fully overheats. Increase the velocity and rate of fire of the Type 97 120HE Howitzer to match the Sherman. Fix the Kami having a shorter range AA and AT50 caliber damage curve. Increased the 2PDR Valentine cannon blast radius to the higher intended radius. Fixed the quick repair specialization sound that could sometimes be inaudible for vehicles. Improved the barrel and mount alignment on the LVT's turret. Uh, fixed a bug that was causing the resupply prompt to show incorrectly under certain conditions when switching vehicles. Fixed some howitzer weapons on tanks needing more than one round to destroy house walls. Fixed an exploit that would allow the incorrect team to spawn at Sturmtiger. Fixed a situation in which light tanks could self-repair and continue to move at the same time. Wow, they're getting they're getting smart. Improved responsiveness for the Pacific tanks when switching between going forward and backwards. Increased the damage of the 50 caliber AAMGs on the Kami and LVT to equal the TTK of other AA guns. A lot of, a lot of acronyms here. Half the time I don't even know what they mean. This change only affects their damage versus planes and is a substantial increase in damage. Fixed the JU-87 Stuka's board cannon not doing damage to airplanes, fixed various issues related to vehicle skins that had gone missing since update 6.2. Skins are now properly applied to all tank and plane wrecks. Fixed the Sturm Tiger applying mud and snow incorrectly. Snow would previously be applied in muddy environments and vice versa, and this has now been corrected. Transport and stationary. Increase the damage of AA by 20% against fighters. Improve the velocity and accuracy of AA when shooting at targets at high altitudes. This should tip the balance in favor of the AA, which should present enough of a threat to planes to prevent planes from bombing them without mutually assured destruction. The larger size of the bombers makes them easier targets and sustains more hits so they do not need the damage buff. The other aircraft are more maneuverable and will need to focus on avoiding AA rather than tanking the damage. 
This change does not substantially change the part of the map that AA can cover, only the effectiveness when defending against planes at higher altitudes. Firing the AA projectiles against dinghy boats, <laughs> dinghy, anyways, and Kettenrad transport vehicles no longer triggers the airburst proximity explosion. Little dinghy explosion. Okay, that's enough of that. Improve the GPW's camera so it clips less when backing into geometry. Fixed a bug that would, in rare cases, cause stationary MGs to keep firing even if the player had exited it. So again, something else that has a mind of its own. Corrected the universal carrier HUD which could show incorrect information when changing seats. Dinghy boats. Um, scoring event has been added when they get destroyed. Planes. Implemented two new scoring events related to pilots bailing and crashing. This will ensure that a player that manages to force a pilot to abandon a plane or crash to obtain points for their efforts. The requirement is that the plane was tagged by the player prior to the bailout. The tagging for this is activated by destroying a part of the plane, such as the wing, rudder, elevator, or engine. Reduce the damage on the UK air-to-ground rockets. Increase the damage on the 2K rockets slightly for all factions. Fix the bug that in some rare cases could cause airplane wreck sounds to play for a longer than intended duration. The collision sound system for planes has also been tweaked to trigger more naturally based upon impact and also removes some occasions where the collision sounds could get stuck in a loop. Oop. Oop. See what I did there? Anyways. Airplane flares now lose effectiveness outside visual range by tweaking the spotting radius curve and gravity drag settings for the airplane flare so the radius shrinks when the flare is outside visual range of 100 millimeters again if you give this video a thumbs down i'll make sure that's not the only thing that shrinks fixed an issue that would make certain skins to not show while in 1p in the ju 88 c plane Planes with manual supercharger reduce the pitch and amp of compressor when supercharger is active. Removed overheat functionality from the Mosquito 6PDR and JU8875 mm since they never overheated. Fixed a bug that would cause planes to not respond well to player input if the player had left and re-entered it. Yeah, generally when you're flying a plane and you exit the plane, you're not able to re-enter it. But, you know, that's enough of that. All of the airplanes, when having the high altitude specialization enabled, will now be able to fly 200 meters higher than without it. Fixed an issue with the lift values that was causing planes to level too much at high speeds. Fixed an exploit which would give some airplanes infinite nitrous. I know nothing about that. Weapons and gadgets. Smoothed scope transitions for all weapons. Player sight will be blocked by the opaque scope model for a shorter time. The slowest scope transitions have had the most quality of life improvements and is especially noticeable on the 6x scopes without quick ADS enabled. Aim down sights, I know what that acronym means. Airplane flares now lose effectiveness outside visual range by tweaking the spotting radius curve and gravity drag settings for the airplane flare so the radius shrinks when the flare is outside visual range of 100 meters plus. A fix for a few melee weapons that could not push transport boats around. You weak bastards. Fixed a bug with the Lewis MG with the extended magazine specialization selected while using certain skins that would cause issues with the iron sight while in ADS mode. The St. Patty skin no longer floats in the air when reloading the Gower 43. That was just from people that were drunk. It wasn't actually floating in the air. People were just drunk. Fix the incorrect ammo listed for the Breda M1935. Fix the incorrect ammo listed for the Selb Slatter 1906. Fix the bug that was causing the player to throw multiple ammo pouches when throwing them towards a soldier who was using a stationary weapon and was pinging them in the head, rendering them unconscious. No, that's bullshit. I just added that in there. Grenades and dynamite thrown from vehicles at high speeds no longer causes extreme throwing range. <laughs> That was actually funny because you could get some really wild throws. Fixed a bug related to the lunge mine and sprinting. When you're holding on to a mine, you don't want to be sprinting because then you trip, you blow your own... Anyways. Fixed a glitch that was related to using the lunge mine and entering a transport vehicle. The M3 no longer displays a muzzle flash if the suppressor is equipped. 
The snake bite stock customization no longer blocks the iron sights view from the M1A1. Fixed the disconnected muzzle on the Type 11 LMG when using three times standard sights. The MK6 revolver no longer has its chamber not aligned with the weapon after using the flare gun. The MAB38 now correctly displays the extended magazine if selected while using the St. Paddy's skin. A fix for the missing fire mode switch sound on the ZK383. Fixed an issue that would cause AP mines to be placed in unexpected ways when placed on some terrain. Fixed a sniper decoy being destroyed when placed next to vehicles. Fixed several windows that would bounce back grenades if the grenade hit the wooden parts supporting the glass <laughs> instead of the glass itself. So you like go to check a grenade at me and I'm like, nope, not on my watch. Close the window and bing, bounces back at your head and kaboom. Fixed an issue that was causing problems when attempting to throw back grenades. Yeah, well, you know, soldiers no longer float in the air <laughs> if they're killed on top of a moving uh, vehicle. The drowning effect no longer stays on the screen if a player is drowning and then enters a dinghy boat. Fixed a glitch that would teleport players slightly when interacting with doors in a specific way. Firestorm fixed an issue that could cause misaligned weapons when exiting a vehicle. Maps. How long are these patch notes? My good lord. Devastation. Conquest found an area by the D-Flag which would cause the V-1 and JB-2 to not explode on impact. This has been fixed. Hamada. Fixed a bug that would cause smaller fuel tanks to not show their explosion under certain conditions. Narvik. Players can no longer get stuck on the boxes located on the lower part of the bridge. Narvik Rush. Tweak the sandbag walls so players do not get stuck on them. Pacific Storm Conquest fixed a tree that was causing tanks to get stuck near the D-Flag. The trees were trolling the tanks. Solomon Islands improved the volatility of certain window frames when the building has gotten damaged. Twisted Steel removed a spawn point on Breakthrough that would lead right into a barbed wire. Oof. Twisted Steel. Rush fixed an exploit that would cause the MCOM to be not armable. Wake Island fixed a flickering burnt textures that would show on the big fuel tanks when destroyed. Wake Island firing on the large shells inside the bunkers with the panzer bush no longer causes them to simply disappear. Wake Island improved the draw distance of the thinner overarching pipes close to the big fuel tanks. Wake Island various LOD and draw distance improvements. Wake Island conquest improved the capture area around flag A. Wake area Rush moved the resupply station that was colliding with the MCOM. Wake Island Rush, the propeller of the airplane inside the hangar no longer hangs in the air after the MCOM explodes. Wake Island Rush spectator mode fixed all of the cameras to be more relevant to the mode. Combined arms fixed a bug that was causing players to not take damage while using a stationary weapon. Combined arms harbor heart headquarters. Made sure the assassin oh my goodness, I can't talk. The assassination target should no longer fall under the map, which would make it impossible to finish the mission. Uh, I'm about to be assassinated. Nope. I'm hiding under the map. Combined arms fixed the EOR screen that would go missing. Practice range fixed a bug that was causing players to be unable to change weapons. Also added the recent weapons that were added into the weapon rack. By public demand, we've made the Swedish parrots louder. UI and others fixed a bug that was causing players unable to join a server that their friend was playing on from the social hub. Spawns on squad mates will now be aborted when the squad mate enters combat. Give this video a thumbs down, I'll make sure you're aborted. Combat today only blocks spawns and would not abort a spawn in progress, leading to situations where players being shot at, meleeed, or surrounded by close enemies with line of sight would still have player squad spawn on them, usually leading to their immediate demise. Squad spawn is risky. This change is intended not to remove squad spawn, but to prevent instant death on squad spawns. You get like a mountain of bodies. We will be evaluating this change and have the ability to toggle this feature on and off without a client update. Ooh. Change the default center dead zone for gamepads to 15% from 13%. 13% was causing some controllers to drift when in a rest position. 
Existing players will need to manually change the setting under options as the fix will only be automatically applied to new Battlefield 5 players. So that's actually really important right there. Um, if you die, blah, dial, if you die while retreating, the you are spotted text will not stay forever in your next spawn to remind you of what you did before. Fixed an issue that was causing the community game's minimum player options not to function properly. The first music track in the front end will now choose from the whole Pacific list following tracks. We'll choose from the complete Battlefield 5 music list including Pacific tracks. The vehicle deploy icon now shows the quantity available for each type of vehicle. A fix for Type 97 Special Assignment Mastery 6, which was incorrectly set up. The repair hint will no longer incorrectly show if max health has been reached. The Your Spotted widget above the minimap now indicates when the player is spotted by any type of spotting flare as opposed to other more direct sources of spotting. Fix the bug that was causing some weapon models to not show in the weapon selection menu when assessed while playing on a server. Added the kills tracker for the M2 flamethrower in the statistics screen. Fixed the dog tag icon from the Selb Slatter 1916. Stability. Various performance and stability improvements. That is it. 16 and a half minutes. What in the blue hell? If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like the video, go ahead, give it a thumbs down. We've already been through some of the scenarios that'll uh, happen to you if you do that. If you want to subscribe to the channel, I mean, naturally, that would be fantastic now, wouldn't it? And if not, thanks for stopping by anyways. Stay happy. Stay socially isolated. Anybody gets too close to you, you shoot them. In the game, that is. In the game. And uh, I'll see you all, or maybe some of you, or maybe none of you, in the next video. Bye for now.